Good morning and a very warm welcome to our Trinity Sunday service. We are the mission community of Biddeford, Landcross, Littleham, Monkley and Weirgifford and we hope that your week has seen you keep safe and well. A big thank you is due to our musicians, our readers, our leaders and intercessors and to our church warden Ben, whose skills have produced this recording. We'd also like to give thanks to the media team at the Clip Around the World race for permission to use video footage from the current race and from the Pacific leg of the 2017 to 18 edition, and also to Wild Goose Publications and Iona Books for permission to use the Blessing, Wayfaring, by Pat Bennett. Today's service is the service that bridges Pentecost with the season of Trinity, the relatively calm waters of the green season of the church. It's a special service for us today because two of our five churches are named for the Holy Trinity and so we are celebrating their patronal festivals. We do this to honour the saint, or in this case, God in Trinity, who is the patron saint of each church. The parishes of Weir Gifford and Landcross would normally have planned a festival service with, of course, stupendous refreshments and cake to follow. But sadly, this year, we can't do that. But we have found other ways to celebrate. Chiming our church bell, our single bell, for a 70th wedding anniversary, a 99th birthday, and an 80th birthday in recent days. So we are celebrating in different ways. In a moment, we'll be singing our first hymn, and it's not perhaps what you might have expected, so I'll share with you some of the themes of the service which influenced that choice. We are all still journeying through and towards change, a changed future and a changing present. Some have said that this transition from lockdown is probably more dangerous than lockdown itself. In this process, we need to continue to put the needs of others before ourselves to face up to and take challenging decisions about the choices that we make. It feels more vulnerable, more edgy. I remembered how we felt last August seeing my son's future mother-in-law off on a year-long round-the-world yacht race. There was adventure and excitement. There was apprehension exhilaration, bereavement at her absence, a whole range of emotions swirling round. The crew were very restricted in what they could take to live aboard a 70-foot racing yacht. But I wanted to give Heather something that mattered. So I copied out some verses from Psalm 107 and tucked a small modern St. Christopher medal and chain into the card. Those verses resonate with where we are now. They that go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters. These men see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind ariseth, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They are carried up to the heaven and down again to the deep. Their soul melteth away because of their trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. 
So when they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, he delivereth them out of their distress. For he maketh the storm to cease, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they are at rest. And so he bringeth them into the haven where they would be. In February, I went to France with the diocese and we crossed both ways on the ferry in full Saint Gale. I stood on the deck filming. It was exhilarating and I thought back to my own times at sea as crew on a racing yacht, longing to reach the safety of harbour or waiting for loved ones who were reported overdue or missing on ocean races. I remembered the terror and the majesty of the sea and also the beauty of starry nights and calm waters. Bernard, of course, my husband, has seen plenty of heavy weather during his time in the Navy and the naval hymn expresses trust in confidence. Confidence in the trinity of creator, word and spirit. The hymn calls on God's protection but is nevertheless uplifting and it's mindful of the Father strong to save who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. Of the living word of God obeyed by winds and waves sleeping calmly in the storm. Of the spirit brooding over the dark waters of creation bringing peace to wild confusion. And of course the trinity of love and power which offers God's protection over all. Trinity House has been charged with the safety of shipping and the well-being of seafarers since being incorporated by Royal Charter in 1514. It's responsible for lighthouses, pilots, voyage and beacons around our shores. It supported sea lanes and allied convoys during the Second World War, as well as the evacuation from Dunkirk and the D-Day landings. Together with the Coast Guard and RNLI, it forms a safety net for mariners navigating our waters. The last lines of the hymn remind us that thus evermore shall rise to thee glad hymns of praise from land and sea. What better place to begin our worship by naming and honouring today's festival of the Trinity and offering praise to God. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee. 
Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 17 and 27 to 31. God's people are comforted. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See! He takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my Lord. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13, starting at verse 11. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh 
The reading today is from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain of which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Well, I started uh, earlier in the churchyard of Merchantford. Now I've come to Land Cross, but it's a gusty, chilly day, and so I've retreated into the porch in the hopes of lessening the wind noise. I spoke earlier about the naval hymn, and there are many instances in the Bible and in the lives of the disciples where they made perilous journeys on water and on sea. And of course, Paul in later years and the missionary saints voyaged some very tricky and dangerous waters. St. Patrick knew all about those when he wrote his own invocation, his own prayer to the Trinity for the protection. It begins, I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. In our Christian aid service, Claire mentioned Father Nathan Kiaga, who was at a recent training session with us. And I remember his metaphor about COVID vividly. He said, we are all in the same storm, but we're in different little boats with different destinations. So as we think about our own prayers for protection and guidance at this time, what can we learn from the Trinity? Exploring the Trinity isn't always easy. At college, we were advised to hone our reflections through the use of scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. I'm going to focus more on experience this morning, although all, all four are always present, because we are in uncharted waters as we navigate the impact of COVID-19 in our lives. A bit like the disciples when they journeyed with Christ. How can the Trinity help us to make sense of where we are? Trinity shows us something about identity, relationship and unity, vital characteristics uh, with which to steer our course in stormy waters. I was musing on this while I was walking thus. And I remembered three of my favourite photographs of her. Mouse as a young puppy, looking rather warily at the world. Mouse as an exuberant teenager, covered in mud and waiting for her bath. And Mouse, the adult, lying seemingly exhausted on the sofa but with me knowing that the word cheese would have her up in an instant. Images can help us not to define God, but to show us something of him in the same way that those photographs of Musk show me the same little dog, but reveal different things about her. You may have seen the stunning photograph of the Helix Nebula, which uncannily resembles a human eye, or some might say, the eye of God. Astrophysics shows us the immense and mysterious worlds of the universe. They sometimes seem overwhelming and almost unmanageable. And yet, for us, our trust is in our God, who reigns over everything, space, 
matter time. We are safe. And the Trinity was itself present and active in the very moments of creation. So much about the Trinity is unknown or unknowable. Sitting with uncertainty, accepting mystery and being comfortable with that can be very challenging to a 21st century psyche. We are used to relying on the explained, on the pragmatic. Knowledge is power, they say, and we are tempted to capture and reduce knowledge to something that we can control. But sometimes in life, we have to accept the things that we can't change, the things that we don't have control over, that we can't even understand. I thought about that and I thought, well, I don't need to know everything. I can't presume to know the mind of God. And I don't know all the answers. Sometimes I don't know is all we can offer, particularly at times of challenge and distress. There are many unknowns about our current situation. We are having to embrace uncertainty in situations that we don't have the answers for. We have to assess and manage risk, to ask ourselves difficult questions and then to put those questions to society. So let's look for a moment at identity. What do we see the identity of the Trinity as being? It shows us three aspects of God, the mighty creator father, the divinely human son revealing something of God to us, the Holy Spirit full of grace, the breath of God, the rushing wind, the presence in our prayers. This revealed identity is bound up in relationship. St. Francis had his own understanding of the relationships of creation, speaking of brother wolf and sister moon. The Trinity shows us relationship that is steadfast and unchanging. It shows us divine love, the seed of which lies in all of us. God is love, says the hymn, and where love is, God is there. Above all, the love of the Trinity is invitational, asking us again and again to respond to the love that is shown to us by God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Perhaps we, as the Church, as the body of Christ, can show that love to the world. Above all, the Trinity shows us what unity looks like. It shows us loving action and interaction. We are told that nothing can separate us from God. The upholding of unity and trust in God and kingdom values is what Christians can offer to a world where unity seems so fragile. As human beings, we were made for community. We are reliant on others for relationship, for help and support, and for our mutual well-being. In recent days, we've had distressing evidence of unity fracturing whether around the strategies for dealing with COVID-19, the interpretation and application of new regulations and restrictions, or tragically, the opening up of old wounds of racial division and inequality. The devil thrives in this division, driving people apart and separating us from God. We can learn so much from the example of the Trinity and from accepting its mystery and its power that lies so far beyond our understanding. We do not need to be in control or to call the shots. 
we have the examples of that divine action and interaction to show us when to hold back and when to act, when to submit and when to lead, how to love and how to pray. So let's have the courage to embrace what we know and what we don't know, to accept that not knowing and even to embrace mystery itself. Malcolm Geit, priest, poet and theologian, can show us something of this. I've chosen a poem of his from his book Sounding the Seasons, published by Canterbury Press. In the beginning, not in time or space, but in the quick, before both space and time, in life, in love, in coherent grace, in three in one and one in three, in rhyme, in music, in the whole creation story, in his own image, his imagination, the triune poet makes us for his glory and makes us each the other's inspiration. He calls us out of darkness, chaos, chance, to improvise a music of our own, to sing the chord that calls us to the dance, three notes resounding from a single tone, to sing the end in whom we all begin, our God, beyond, beside us, and with me. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to you this Trinity Sunday and ask for the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit to guide us through these strange times. Lord, when all our certainties are gone, be with us across the earth. We pray for your help to reduce the destructive force of COVID-19. Let us have a swift and targeted vaccine and testing that is sure and thorough. We ask for you to heal, to wipe away tears, to give hope to those made jobless, to provide for those with no food and comfort for the abused worldwide. Let your presence go before them and beyond them and beside them, all around them and within them. Let the voice of your people who ask for social equity, justice and freedom be heard without further blood being spilt, be it in the States or Hong Kong and across the globe. We long for the day when all people, whatever their colour, race or religion, will be treated equally and justly. Wrestle with the conscience of our world leaders and for the political prisoners, the war-torn, the homeless and lonely. Be with them. You bless us with our natural world. Thank you for the seasons and the most magnificent springtime. Thank you for the reduced pollution levels the louder bird song and a somehow bolder nature. Help us to hold on to a healthier environment. We pray for the farmers that they will have enough rain to grow crops and feed their animals. Lord, we pray for the witness of the church this week, particularly in places where the Christian faith is ignored and forgotten. We pray for those who carry major responsibilities as bishops and church leaders. Give them compassion, wisdom and the mind of Christ. 
Equip them and us, Lord, to know how to reach out to people in these times when traditional worship is not available. Give us a sense of expectation as we come together to participate in online worship and let us be inspired by what we see and hear. Help us to put our differences behind us and to unite instead behind the great commission of Jesus to make disciples of all nations. On this Trinity Sunday, which is the patronal festival of Lancross and Weir Gifford churches, we pray for all those who worship, support or feel that either of these churches is their spiritual home. Lord, we thank you for those people who sustain us at this difficult time by their love and forgiveness. Thank you for the network of people with whom our lives are inextricably linked and who make up the fabric of our family and community life. Make us alert to each other's needs and quick to serve and encourage one another as we exist closely together. May our gentleness with each other reflect your gentleness with us. We pray for safety and protection for all children and staff returning to school, all those continuing to work in pressurised and demanding environments, and all those who are afraid for their future as they face a very different landscape. We pray for those for whom this day will be, seem long and hard, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, those caring for loved ones who are ill, those with dementia. We pray particularly for those for whom this day will be their last. We name in our hearts any people we know in special need. We know you to be both Lord and healer of your broken world and we ask you to touch with your generous love all those who are on our hearts today because of their special need. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. We're filled with joy at the words that we read in Matthew 28 where you say, Jesus, I will be with you always. Amen and Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed the glory of your eternal fellowship of love with your Son and with the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty undivided in splendour, yet one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power and might, might heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. 
and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ has is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, will again. come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. George, St. Swithin, St. Mary and St. Peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are, we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And now, wherever we are, we take a moment to make our own spiritual communion.
God be the road on which you travel. He the mountains on which you are tested and challenged. He the wells at which you find healing and peace. Christ be the light by which you travel. He the vision which informs and enlarges you. He the lodestar shining in your darkest nights. The Spirit inspire you as you travel. She the restlessness driving you onwards. She the stillness leading you to the heart of God. The Trinity, the three, go with you as you travel. And may your journey begin, continue and end in them.